Hello, dear colleagues. My name is Valeria Timonina, and I would like to present you our work about buffering role of HSP90 in a long-term evolutionary scale. Previously, in different organisms, it was shown that HSP90 can work as a buffer of mutational load. In this figure, you can see an example of such work that was performed in Drosophila melanogaster. In this work, it was shown that different defects in fly's phenotype appears if HSP90 level is decreased. It is not due to de novo mutations. These defects were present in the genome before, but they were hidden by buffering activity of HSP90. So when inhibiting HSP90, these effects became visible. Similar effects was shown also in other organisms, but all such works were performed in a short-term evolutionary scale, that is, in a scale of several generations. In this project, we hypothesized that HSP90 can be a buffer of mutational load also in a long-term evolutionary scale. In case of less numeric animals like elephants, that have low effective population size. We expect strong genetic drift, which leads to accumulation of numerous slightly deleterious variants. Such variants decrease quality of genome. We call it high mutation burden. In case of species with higher effective population size like mice, purifying selection is strong enough to eliminate a slightly deleterious variants. We expect the genome of such species should be high quality and mutation burden should be low. If there is compensatory role of HSP90 in a long-term evolutionary scale, then we expect that it will be different in species with high versus low NE. Compensatory role should be more important in case of elephants because it should compensate strong mutation burden, but it should not be so important in case of high NE species like mice. Our first expectation is that expression level of HSP90 is higher in species with low NE because it should buffer high mutation burden. To check this, we analyzed expression data for primates and we see that Expression level of HSP90 is higher in gorilla compared to macaca that have the higher effective population size. So, our first result is in line with our expectation. Next, it is known that species with low effective population size accumulate more non-synonymous substitutions as compared to species with high effective population size. So, in this picture, you can see that if we regress KNKS ratio, uh, that is the metric of strength of purifying selection, versus body mass, that is a metric that approximates effective population size, we'll see that slope of this regression will be positive, and we call this slope relaxation. We expect that HSP90 shouldn't relax because it has very important function, especially in species with low NE. To concretize, if we mark relaxation of HSP as alpha and relaxation of other genes as beta, then alpha should be less than beta. And that is what we are going to check. First, we had a look at relaxation of HSP90. We collected data from ensemble compare about Kenkes ratio of 1 to 1 arsologs of HSP90 for 46 mammalian species. Then we performed a simple linear model Kenkes versus generation length, which is another approximation of effective population size. And we see that HSP90 has a positive slope it relaxes in species with low effective population size. So next step is to compare the, the relaxation of HSP90 with other genes. 
whether the slope of HSP90 is less steep than slope of other genes, or, in other words, whether alpha is less than beta. To check this, first we chose genes comparable with HSP90. So, in order to find such genes, we perform principal component analysis, taking into account metrics of evolutionary constraint and structural characteristics of about 11,000 genes. We took 300 neighbors of HSP90 in the space of first two principal components, which marked in blue color. For all these chosen genes, we performed the same linear model as we did before for HSP90. In the left figure, you can see that we chose only genes that have nominally significant slopes, genes that are under the red line. For all these genes, we built a distribution of slopes from linear model. You can see it on the right figure. And we see that slope of HSP90, the dot, is in the bottom of this distribution. And this red dot is alpha as we defined before. Beta represents all other slopes of all other genes. So we can say that, as we expected, alpha is less than beta. Next, we switched our focus to human regulatory variants. Regulatory variants, or CCQTLs, are genetic variants that regulate expression level of genes. If such variants increase expression level, then they are called gain of expression. If they decrease expression level, they are called loss of expression. So we expect that because of potential buffering role of HSP90, loss of its expression should be very deleterious. So HSP90 should have a deficit of loss of expression variance as compared to other genes. In order to check it, we analyze GTX data about human CCQTLs. For all genes that have significant CCQTLs, we calculated proportion of gain of expression variance in all regulatory variants. Then we built a distribution of this proportion. And we see that HSP90 is in the top of the distribution. So we can conclude that HSP90 does have a deficit of loss of expression variance, which is in line with our expectation. Taking into account all our results, we can conclude that they are in, all in line with our hypothesis, and so HSP90 can work as a buffer of mutation burden in long-term evolutionary scale. I would like to thank my colleagues for contribution to this work. Thank you for your attention, and I am ready to answer your questions.